News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 98.3 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. The man who allegedly caused a fatal rollover crash on Interstate 90 has pleaded not guilty. Good morning, everyone. Montana Morning for Wednesday, August 30th, 2017. The sky is hazy. We have 55 degrees. A couple of things here. First, there's an air quality alert today, because obviously because of the smoke. But there's also a red flag warning through tomorrow, primarily for strong winds and possible thunderstorms. Air quality is unhealthy for the entire uh, uh, Missoula County area, so that's <laughs> we can take care of that air quality uh, with just one word. That's unhealthy today. And our newscast this morning is sponsored by First Montana Bank, your home for free centennial checking, plus unlimited cash back whenever you use your debit card. One of our top stories this morning, a man who pleaded has pleaded not guilty to charges that he grabbed the steering wheel of a moving vehicle while intoxicated and thus caused a crash that killed two people and injured six others on Interstate 90. James Bayford entered his plea yesterday to two counts of negligent homicide and six counts of criminal endangerment. The Missoulian reports that Bayford remains in custody on $200,000 bail. Court records say Bayford's blood alcohol level was 0.209 after the August 5th crash that killed 33-year-old Vanessa Anderson and 36-year-old Donnie Barlow. They were in a shuttle that was transporting people between Missoula at a weekend festival to prevent alcohol-related crashes. A new fire burning in the Bitterroot National Forest has caused the evacuation of over 65 homes. Spokesman Todd McKay said the Nelson Creek fire was discovered Monday, grew rapidly to the point where homes were threatened. Doing bucket work all throughout the afternoon yesterday to try to keep that fire, at least in, in the same area, keep it uh, contained. We uh, had fire folks on it, firefighters, all last night. Currently is about 80 acres. It did grow quite a bit overnight and is burning in heavy timber. At that point, Ravalli County Sheriff Steve Holton determined that evacuations were necessary. This morning, it had grown to 80 acres and, and closer to that uh, urban interface with some private property and structures. So we went ahead and made the warnings uh, in order, and that, that's that entire area on Nez Pierce Road. Every resident off of Nez Pierce Road that was in an ordered area. Holden said the Myers fire has also caused concern in the Bitterroot, leading to evacuation warnings to about 250 residents there. The Rice Ridge fire changed directions suddenly on Monday and forced a 1,000 people to evacuate the area. Fire Information Officer Sarah Rausch has details. So the weather with the fire uh, was hot and dry and causing the fire to be fairly active. Um, and then around 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they had a wind shift. Um, and so that caused the fire to um, spread into an area uh, which triggered those evacuations. Roush said even though hundreds have been ordered to evacuate, the town of Sealy Lake is still open for business. Access uh, through Highway 83 is still open. Yes, so businesses are still open in the... Um, We'll get some clarification on some of the businesses that are on the east side, but right now that evacuation order is in place for areas east of Highway 83. And more details are available by clicking the link on our website at newstalkkgvo.com. This is an evacuation warning for the Big Sky and Emerald Lake areas uh, due to the Rice Ridge Fire. This evacuation warning includes all properties from the intersection of Woodworth Road and Highway 83 east to Skilly Drive and all properties north of Woodworth Road. This includes approximately 100 more homes under evacuation warnings. Due to the evacuations announced Monday in Sealy Lake due to the change in direction of the Rice Ridge Fire, Sealy Swan High School has canceled the first week of classes, at least until this coming Tuesday, September 5th. MCPS Communications Director Hatton Littman said the order went out Tuesday morning to cancel those classes. We released an additional statement today that school will be canceled on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. The school was already planned to be closed on Friday as well as Monday for the Labor Day holiday. So we're trying to have students plan to return on Tuesday, but we will have to update families with information pending any new evacuation orders. Littman said the school had just begun its first week when the evacuation order was in Pose. Monday had just freshmen, and that day of school happened as planned. They were expecting to have sophomores through seniors return today, and certainly.
unfortunately, they'll have to do some contingency planning for their lessons for next week. We do know that in addition to student families being evacuated, we do have about half of the staff evacuated at this point as well. Littman said the school has about 10 teachers and support personnel and around 100 students. The updated uh, the administration plans to keep students and staff updated about whether school will resume next Tuesday or if an alternate location will have to be found elsewhere. Another Sealy story, U.S. mail couriers may travel through snow, rain, and gloom of night to get the mail into Montana, but they won't be traveling through the smoke and flames in Sealy Lake this week. Postal Service spokesman Pete Nowacki said the mail has been rerouted. Well, we got the evacuation order, and because of that, we have had to temporarily suspend operations at Sealy Lake and move all of that mail over to Milltown for people to pick up. We really have no idea how long we'll be there. In situations like this, we operate based on what the emergency responders tell us. Yesterday, one mail worker who had not yet been evacuated from home was still at work at the Sealy Lake branch, allowing people in to get Monday's mail from post office boxes. Things will have to operate differently in Milltown. You know, they're not going to be able to access it like they would with a P.O. box where they can just come in at any, at any time. They would have to come in during regular window hours and ask for the mail, and they will have to provide a photo ID in order to, you know, keep the mail safe and protect the privacy of, of our customers. Of course, we have to do that. All of Tuesday's mail was sent to Milltown, as will all future days' mail, until the evacuation has been rescinded. Nowacki said Monday's mail and all older mail still left in P.O. boxes at the post office in Sealy Lake will remain there. A former Montana legislative candidate has signed a settlement agreement, admitting that he accepted illegal campaign services from a corporation. Pat Wagman has agreed to pay almost $20,000 by October 1st, as part of the settlement with Commissioner of Political Practices Jeff Mangan, which was signed on Friday. The former state Senate candidate is one of nine Republican former Commissioner Jonathan Modell accused of taking contributions from the National Right to Work Committee during the 2010 GOP primary elections. One, only one of the nine cases is unresolved, that against former state House candidate Terry Bannon. The rest have either been settled or resolved by a court order against a candidate. One went to trial, where a jury found that former Representative Art Wittick coordinated his campaign and took illegal contributions from the anti-union group. And a 52-year-old Montana woman competing in a northern Idaho endurance event is in fair condition at a hospital after being struck by an event support vehicle that occurred last weekend. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office said the vehicle struck Crystal O'Connor of Bozeman at about 1 o'clock Sunday. while She was on the 112-mile bike portion of the Ironman Coeur d'Alene. Officials say a helicopter transported O'Connor to Kootenai Health Center in Coeur d'Alene, where she was initially listed in critical condition. A hospital spokeswoman Monday said O'Connor has improved to fare. Police say 65-year-old Michael Fuller of Coeur d'Alene was driving the support vehicle that struck O'Connor. Fuller was not injured. Police are continuing to investigate. Our news talk time now is 613. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Smoky sunshine today with our high temperatures topping out in the low 90s. It will be windy at times with wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour and showers and thunderstorms will rumble through this afternoon and evening. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for Missoula's KECI 13.